This is Twit. This show is sponsored by NatureBox. NatureBox ships tasty snacks right to your door with over 100 flavors to choose from, like Asiago and cheddar cheese crisps. You'll never get bored of snacking again. Go online to get your first box at naturebox.com slash twit. Welcome to i5 for the iPhone, episode 160. i5 covers the latest iPhone apps, tips and tricks, and of course, news. I am Megan Maroney. iOS 9 comes out today. I will have my full review of that next week, but let's get to today's show. Number one is the new iPhones. Apple's Hey Siri, give us a hint event happened last Wednesday, and by now you've probably heard that the company announced new Apple Watches, new Apple Watch bands from Hermes, a new Apple TV, and oh yeah, two new iPhones, which are available to pre-order now and which will be available on September 25th. The iPhone 6S and 6S Plus look pretty much the same as the 6 and the 6 Plus. They're even roughly the same size, and they're going to cost the same as the 6 and the 6 Plus did when they came out. Here is what's different. 3D Touch. 3D Touch technology, previously called Force Touch on the Apple Watch, lets you interact with the phone in different ways. While I'm willing to believe that these new gestures have the ability to change the way we use our phones just as Pinch to Zoom once did, it's hard for me to see how this revolutionary technology will be used until I have the phone in my sweaty little hands. Here's how 3D Touch is supposed to work. It measures the pressure from your finger and brings up a menu in the same way right-clicking on a mouse works. You can use it to glance at your email, save a photo, you can even use it in Facebook and some other third-party apps. 3D Touch requires the hardware in the 6S phone, so you won't be able to use it on that old-fashioned iPhone 6 Plus of yours. Here's another possibly revolutionary feature of the S model phones, live photos. Again, I will have to see this in action before I really weigh in on how cool or game changing it is. The camera app in the new iPhones has the ability to automatically capture 1.5 seconds before and after any picture you take. Then the phone saves the photos in something that looks like an animated GIF, but I'm told that it is not. If you're worried about filling up your storage space, Apple claims that live photos won't take up that much more space than regular pictures, but if you take three or four pictures for every one picture, I'm not sure how it gets away without clogging up your phone. So consider that when you're deciding which S model you're going to go with. I can only imagine that the 16 gigabytes of storage will not be big enough for anyone watching this show. I'll have a full review of the 6S as soon as I get one, and I will also review those $1,000 Hermes Apple Watch bands as soon as I win the lottery. Number two is iOS on Android Wear. A few weeks ago, Google announced that you can now pair your iPhone with your Android Wear watch. But would you want to? The jury is still out. I borrowed Leo's LG Urbane to test it. Now, this is the Urbane that came out in the spring, not the brand new one. At $350, this watch costs almost exactly the same as my Apple Watch. And I will tell you that right away, I was impressed at how easy it was to pair my iPhone to the Android Wear. Now, I am an iOS fangirl, but at work, we use a lot of Google products, mail, calendar, etc. Because everything is in the cloud, the process was pretty seamless. Not only did I start getting notifications that I'm used to on my Apple Watch, the Android Wear app takes advantage of Google Now, so I even got alerts that I don't get on my Apple Watch, like package notifications or reminders that it's time to leave for a flight. Google Now pulls these details from my Gmail, whereas my Apple Watch does not. I also found that notifications on Android Wear are a little more intrusive. They appear right on the screen and they stay there, whereas the Apple Watch, they disappear and are replaced by this unobtrusive red dot that lets me know I have notifications. That's also good from a privacy perspective. The LG Urbane has an always on feature that I like, except that when I have it turned on, some of the contents of an incoming email is also available to anyone looking at my watch. Android Wear is not quite as good from a fitness perspective as the Apple Watch. Now, I'm used to the workout app on my Apple Watch, and while it's far from perfect, it does what I need it to do. And Android Wear for fitness is just not as robust. The LG Urbane checks my heart rate, just like my Apple Watch. It even gives results more quickly than my Apple Watch does. Android Wear counts my steps, but it doesn't count keep track of my calories that I've burned. I have the Apple Watch Sport, which is designed to withstand 90 minutes of sweaty hot yoga, and I am not about to put 
put L- Leo's LG Urbane through that, even if he did just order the new version that came out last week. I'm going to continue to test this app, but so far I'd say it's a pretty good choice for iPhone users not interested in buying an Apple Watch. The biggest difference I think is that the Apple Watch just looks so much nicer than any Android watch I've seen so far. They both have OLED displays, but the design of the watch doesn't even begin to compare. The Android Wear app for iOS is free. Number three is a secret photo hiding calculator app. Now that the new iPhones have been announced, countless parents will be upgrading and handing over their older iPhones to their kids. If you're one of those parents, it's a good idea to think long and hard about whether your kid is ready for a phone. Among the many conversations I had with my child before handing over a phone was that she may not, under any circumstances, take photographs of herself while she is not wearing clothing. My daughter has given me no reason to believe that she would take these kinds of pictures, and I got a lot of, mom, gross, mom, just no, stop talking, mom. But still, I'm glad we had the conversation. Kids lack impulse control. That's part of what makes them kids. I can assure you from personal experience that telling your kids not to take naked pictures of themselves is an awkward conversation, but it's one that you have to have, and you can't stop there. Even if you trust your kids, you should set up rules about how and when you are allowed to look at their phones. And know that kids are smart. If they want to hide things from you, they will do everything in their power to do it. Here is just one kind of app I've heard about that some kids might be using to hide private photos from you. The app I heard about was called High Calculator. But when I looked it up, I saw that there were more than a dozen of these kinds of apps. Here's how one of them works. If you look at your phone, the app looks like a calculator. Open it up and it works like a calculator. But if you know the passcode, enter it and voila, it's a hidden stash of all my most private photos. This would be a super easy way for kids to fool their parents, but not you, dear parents or friends of parents who are watching this right now. So next time you're talking to your child about what's on their phone, let them know that you are well aware of these kinds of apps. Note, if you're an adult and you want to keep photos private on your phone, I don't necessarily recommend this app either. It was a bit clunky and non-intuitive. It crashed on me a few times and the ads were annoying, but it's free in the App Store. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by NatureBox. Let's imagine a scenario in which you walk into a grocery store and find an aisle of snacks personalized just for you. All of your favorites in one place. You like salty? Boom. There they are. You like sweet? You got it. You like a weird combination of salty and sweet and spicy? No problem. That would be great, right? Now imagine if these snacks were already at your home. You know you're going to be tempted to snack. Nature Box says, give in to that temptation, but in a smart way. Everything in moderation, right? If you're confused by all the choices, let me take a moment to recommend my favorites. Sea salt pop pops, coffee kettle popcorn, and Italian bistro pretzels. Nature Box has over 100 ridiculously delicious snacks to choose from, and they get delivered directly to your doorstep. Nature Box also releases new snacks every single month. Plus, they have a smart snack guarantee, so if there's ever anything you don't love, let Nature Box know, and they will replace it in next month's box. Go online to get your first box at naturebox.com slash twit. That's N-A-T-U-R-E-B-O-X dot com slash twit. Number four is an email from Eileen from Ohio regarding my review of the Spire, the wearable that's designed to remind you to stay calm. As I said in the last episode, I wanted to like the Spire, but it didn't seem to work that well for me. Eileen had a different opinion. She says she's been using the Spire for three weeks, and here are her thoughts. First, I find that the Spire is wonderfully comfortable when worn on my bra, about halfway between the strap and under my arm. I never feel it. Now, this is very interesting, Eileen. Eileen wears her spire on the side. I will try that. I was wearing it in the center here. (laughs) Eileen also writes, the tense alerts have been right on target. When I received a call that upset me, when my gut is a little uncomfortable, when I meet a person with whom I have a tense relationship, the calm and focus also seem to reflect my body's psychological conditions accurately too. Next, disconnects haven't been a problem. I will say that the notifications on my Apple Watch have been great overall, but a few of them are a little buggy. I sent my concerns to the company and they worked with me to clarify my concerns so they could correct the issues. Lastly, the reminders to take a deep breath elicit the thought, yes, I needed that. I personally recommend it for people who want another way to monitor their well-being. Thank you, Eileen. You have inspired me to try the device again and to make a silly pun. If you have feedback on alternative views to mine, I always love to hear it. You can write to i5 at twit.tv or directly to me at megan at twit.tv. 
Number five is paper on the iPhone. Last week, Apple announced the forthcoming iPad Pro. A giant workhorse like the iPad Pro also requires a fancy implement for writing on the device. Don't call it a stylus call it the Apple Pencil. It's $100 and just looking at it causes me anxiety when I think about how easy it would be to lose. But the videos that showed off what it looks like to create art with the Apple Pencil were amazing and that reminded me of my favorite app to create art on the iPad. That app is called Paper by 53 and it wasn't available on the iPhone until now. The Paper iPhone app is free and it's more about creating an idea board than just sketching. Here's a board I created for all my ideas for future i5 for the iPhone shows. Here are some of my ideas. I can sketch, add photos. I can easily make checklists or bulleted lists by just swiping right. I can turn text into headers by swiping left. If you aren't a fan of sketching with your finger, you can buy the Pencil by 53 that's designed to be used with paper and costs half as much as the Apple Pencil. Paper also makes it really easy to share your project with someone. Just tap the share icon and you can share it as a PDF, a presentation, or just as images. Are you a fan of paper? How do you use it? I'd love for you to share your ideas with me. You can share them on Twitter. I'm at Megan Maroney, or you can email me directly at Megan at twit.tv. And that does it for this episode. Thanks for watching. All of the apps, links, and other info from the show can be found at twit.tv slash i5. You can email ideas, questions, or general feedback to i5 at twit.tv. I am Megan Maroney. We'll see you next week on i5 for the iPhone. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com.